Stacy's Homestead and I have a bunch of leftover carrots that I'm going to be peeling and chopping up and we're going to ferment them. Um, I like to do fermented carrots, pickles, cucumbers, um, onions, jalapenos, banana peppers, and uh, garlic. So we're going to start off doing carrots though. And I'm just going to peel them and chop them up and we're going to, I'll show you how easy it is to ferment. <laughs> Alright, so we got our carrots all cut up here. And so what, we're going to ferment these carrots and we're going to put onions. I got some onions peeled and ready to go. And then we're going to add garlic as well. So what I have to do though is because I need, um, I use pickle jars for my fermenting. I don't like using my canning jars or anything. So I have a pickle jar from last year's onion fermentation. So this was filled up with fermented onion and I put it on hamburgers and, and um, sandwiches and stuff. So it lasts me almost a year. There's just a little bit at the bottom. I'm going to take this out, put it in a smaller jar so I can use this jar for my fermenting. So I'm going to do that and we'll get back to Come back and start chopping the carrots because I want to do them in slices. All right, so I took out those uh, fermented onions I had in here. I only had a really tiny bit, a tiny amount. Um, this was another jar I got to clean. Um, it was only a tiny amount though. It is perfect to fit in this little leftover jar and I'll just send it to my husband um, for work for his sandwiches. Mm. So there you go. You can put those on his sandwiches at work. It'll be perfect. So that's all of what's left of my fermented onion. Now I fermented this onion in a lime with a lime in it and it so I don't care for it. So I would only eat these onions in sandwiches because it's really good in the sandwiches, but I couldn't eat them by itself because just the lime taste was overwhelming. So I'm not gonna ever put a lime in it. So is it just a, a experiment? It didn't make it bad, it just made it where you can only eat it in, a san in like a sandwich. But I like to put my onions on salads and stuff, so I'm not gonna add lime in next time. But I did put um, jalapeno in it. These were spicy. So, all right. And then I take the leftover brine. And um, since I don't care for the lemon taste, normally I'll just drink that because it's good stuff. Or I reuse it as a starter for the next one. But I'm going to um, put it in some animal chicken feed and feed it to the chickens. It'll be good for them. All right, so let's get these carrots cut up and onions cut up and, and um, I'm gonna wash this jar so we can fill our jars up. I right, got my jars washed up and we're just gonna cut those carrots long ways so we have nice spears. I'm just gonna cut them long ways So we have good spears in here. Now, you know what? I tried uh, uh, fermenting um, baby store-bought carrots. You know the baby carrots you buy in a bag? Well, those things don't ferment very good. They turn super slimy. So I don't know, I didn't know why. And then I looked it up. And you know what? They bleach those things to make them last. So that's why, um, they got really slimy and didn't ferment very good. They just didn't, they had, they bleached them. That was just, I don't understand why they do that. Don't understand why they bleach and stuff like that. That's not good. And then we'll do a layer. So we've got layer of carrots. Put this where you can see it. Um, so we're going to do a layer of carrots, a layer of onion. We'll just do um just cut up the onion like this and then cut it in half and kind of try to open them up and just put them in just open them up and put them in all 
right. All right, and then I think we'll do, we'll just do uh, three onions in this. Three onions, just to give it flavor. And just put your spears in there. I just do, they're not pretty, they're just rough chopped, you know, just roughly chopped up. Just a rough chop of them. Something's going on with my arm, I can't feel it. I lost feeling in my arm and my left hand. I, I think I have a pinched nerve, so it's hard for me to cut stuff right now. It's like tingly. I think it's because um, I saw a tree a while ago. And when I do anything with my hands lately, it just I'm, I lose function. So it's mainly with my left hand because I'm left-handed. I do everything with my left hand. those in here. No, I think these are two long spears. I'll just cut these in half like that. There we go. Cut them in half. Like that, push them in. You can add whatever you want to it. You can put cabbage in it, cauliflower. If I had those, I'd put them in. So this is really good. This is a good snack. You just take a couple out and snack on them with some olives and cheese and crackers. It's really delicious. My son is really healthy and he, um, my youngest son. It loves stuff like this. And I'm going to fill these up, this jar up with these nice bite sized pieces. And let's do an onion now. Just chop, do a rough chop on this onion here. Rough chop, have some pieces. There's some parts on there that didn't look good. Take that off. Just sprinkle these in. I think we'll, that's enough for the onion. Not too much onion here. There we go. All right. Put that onion in. We'll save. I have two other onions. I'm gonna um save for something else. We'll just put them in the fridge. Okay, put that right there. And then let's get some garlic before it gets too full. Get some garlic in our jar before it gets too full here. I got ready peeled garlic just for fermenting. Because I, I do a lot of fermenting. There we go. All right, and we're gonna add a good handful, good handful of garlic. Just get, give it a garlic flavor. And those are good to snack on too. There. There we go. Got some nice little garlics in there. I'm put this back in the fridge. Fruit flies love my house because I ferment so much and they smell it. They can't get to it. I... There we go. All right, so we got the garlic in there. Let's add some peppercorn. I'm gonna put some peppercorn in. A good little palmful peppercorn. A little more. 
and sometimes I put a little sugar in. Let's we can put a little sugar in just for a little sweetness because sometimes sugar brings out good flavor. Just a tiny bit of sugar. Mm. And I just sprinkle enough to have a small layer on the top. And then um, shall we do some red pepper? Do we want it spicy? Do we want it a little bit spicy? Hmm. Or do we want it to taste like pickles? I have a, just a little bit of chili powder I want to get rid of. And we'll just sprinkle that in here. Give a little spice. Give a little spice. That way I get rid of this jar here. Add a little bit of dill if we want, because we're... I like dill in it. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of dill. You can uh, also, if you wanted to, um, give a little Asian flair. You could add ginger to it without the dill. So now, now let's continue to put the carrots in. You can put pickling spice in here. I don't like pickling spice very much. I have some. I just I'm not very fond of it. I'm gonna try to put these in here. Just smash them in as much as we can. These are nice bite-sized little snack pieces here. A little spicy garlic. A little bit of spicy garlic going on. Carrots are good at absorbing flavors and salts and stuff. So like if you have a really, like if you accidentally put too much salt in like your spaghetti sauce or too much garlic or something, um, you, you toss a carrot in there and it, it will absorb salt out of your dish. So that's a good little trick. All right, you know what, I want it a little more spicy. Let's do some red pepper. Um, I have flakes. But I'm gonna do the powder. Well, I think the powder will be good. So let's. I'll sh I'll do a little palmful. That's how much. Bam. There we go. My husband loves spicy stuff. We'll make it spicy for him. I already make kimchi, so we don't want it to make it taste like kimchi though either. And it won't. Kimchi has its own flavor in itself. All right, cause um. Let's do another carrot real fast. All right. There we go. Got that in there. We want to make sure it fits under the brine because any vegetables that are sticking out of your water, your brine, will get moldy. So I don't worry about weighing it down. Weights are just a gimmick. I fermented for years. You don't need weights. You either stir it every day or push it down. Just as long as you push it back under the liquid, you're good to go. That's all you have to do. Just chuck on it every day. And the weights tend to get stuck and they fall under. So many people complain about them. I never. I tried it with a rock once when I first started. <laughs> but it's. I, over the years, you just know that all you have to do is make sure the water is covering the top and every day you just take your little handy dandy masher and mash it down and you're all good. All right, that's it. So we're gonna put some salt in. And I'm gonna use kosher salt. You can use sea salt. Let me go get this kosher salt. I'm gonna use kosher salt. You can use sea salt, any any salt you want. Um, that doesn't have the added iodine in it. Hmm. I mean, if you use the iodine one, it's just gonna make it cloudy. It's not gonna be harmful. It'll just be cloudy. But, all right, so. Um, I always guesstimate. I, you know, when I first started fermenting, I thought you had to be super exact in salt, but you don't. So you might wanna start off tasting it and if it tastes like, 
salt water that you can swallow and drink, you're good to go. You want it to be salty, but not too salty where you can't swallow it. So, I just would put enough in, taste it, if it's, you want it to have a strong saltiness, like the ocean, almost, but a little less. So, you want it, like, if you, like pickle juice, you know, like, you want to be able to drink it, because you want to drink the juice, too, if you can, it's really good for you. All right, so, in my experience, you don't even need a whole lot of salt sometimes. You just need to get that fermentation going. The salt is the food, and it's the preservation of it. All right, so this type of jar, I'm just going to put a palmful of salt, about three palmfuls. And that would be about four tablespoons for y'all. So put four tablespoons of salt or so, probably more. You want more than less, right? You know, an example of the saltiness flavor you want is like soy sauce. You know soy sauce has a salty flavor, but you want to drink it and eat it? Well, that's, you just want it salty enough like that. So we're going to cover this up and then I'm going to taste it. I don't usually taste it, but I will just to, yeah, it needs more salt. So I need, I'm going to do a couple more palmfuls. So. So one, because remember, carrots soak up a lot of salt in to them. All right, this salt's not coming out. There, that should be just enough salt. And then that will get the fermentation started. Push everything down. Get our so the salt will help start the fermentation. Put everything down, get a little bubbles out. You, it'll bubble on its own. You you don't have to like deep bubble, but I like to do that. All right. Put this on a clean spot. Let's add a little more. There we go. And then I loosely. I, because I'm an experienced fermenter, I loosely put this on like that. You can put a rag on with a rubber band. A lot of people do that. But I'll just put the lid on, kind of close it, and then I burp it every day. I just burp it every day. So, and that's it. Okie dokie, so that's how you ferment any vegetable that's all you do is it salt and water that is it and you set it on your counter for a week or so depending on the temperature in your house now because it's summertime this will probably be ready to be um, put in the refrigerator uh, in about four days so every day I'm gonna open it up make sure my stuff's under the brine and then I'm gonna close it, light, loosely put my lid back on, or you guys put um, a cloth with a rubber band on, and wait, and you'll know when it's fermenting because it'll start bubbling. And then when it's done fermenting, it'll stop bubbling. And the vegetables change color. And then it'll start tasting like pickles, so. And then whenever it tastes how you want it to, that's when you put it in the refrigerator. Um, I will leave mine on the counter, uh, and it's all, it's good to go on the counter, but some people like to put it in the fridge. So, and that's it. That's how you ferment any vegetable. All right, y'all. So that's it. That's how you ferment carrots. And we'll just talk to y'all later. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.